All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be going over some of the new features that Synology introduced to Synology Drive in DSM-7. And in my opinion, I think they've got it to a place where it can replace Google Drive, and in a lot of ways, it might be even better than Google Drive due to the ability to have it locally. So Synology DSM-7 released full about mm, two weeks ago, early July of 2021, and with it came a few updates to Synology Drive that just make it so much more usable. So for those of you who don't know, Synology Drive is kind of like Dropbox and Google Drive in that sense where you've got the ability to share files with everybody and it's really set up for an office setting where you can share files between teams and everything like that. It allows you to sync files from the NAS to your local computer and have them on the hard drive as well as easily share files between people. It is set up for businesses, but I as a home user, I guess I'm a business home user, have gotten a lot out of it by the ability to easily sync folders between my multiple computers. It is a really great setup to have and DSM-7 has brought a lot of updates to it. And so if we hop into DSM-7 here, we can see that overall, not only does it have new logos, but if we open up Synology Drive Admin Console, we can see that there's actually a lot more information in here and I kinda wanna show it. So they've got a much better breakdown by what is going on and who is accessing things. And so right here is probably one of the best features for businesses especially, which allows you to see which files are being accessed the most from external users, aka users who have not been authenticated. This allows you to see a lot of information and is a great sanity check to see, hey, did something get shared that shouldn't have been? Why are a bunch of people downloading things? Is this taking up bandwidth and everything like that? I'm gonna go over that in more detail here. It also has a great usage right here that helps you show how this has been growing over time. And so you can see that the database, interestingly enough, I really have not been doing a ton of modifications to this, but the database has been steadily growing for the past few weeks. Now, that is not a very large amount. This is megabytes on the scale over here, but it is pretty interesting that I don't have a ton of information in here, but it is a seven meg database. So that's likely just a snapshot of every day of saying, hey, who's been accessing files and everything like that? but especially if you have a very busy office, this database could get very large. And so one thing you're probably going to want to look at right here is under settings and probably wanting to use the RAM as a database cache, especially for those large offices because it can really make these operations go a lot faster. And another great thing they've introduced with DSM-7 is the ability to better choose when you're indexing. And so one issue that I found, and this was in that video where I went over the 15 most common reasons why Synology is slow, is that if you're writing huge files, I'm talking 10 gig connection, to a Synology that is also a team folder, it will actually slow down that because it's got to index it. Here, you can start choosing what to index and why, and if it's indexing, you can even delay it up here and say, you know what, don't index for the next eight hours, let's let everybody do these massive transfers, and then tonight, when everybody's out of the office, it'll go through and finish its index. So that is going to be a great feature. The other thing, and this is probably the thing that I'm most excited about right here, is the C2 storage bandwidth for hybrid share. Personally, this is not going to be helpful for me at all, but who it is going to be ultra helpful for are a lot of my clients. I have a lot of clients who are video production houses who don't really have a place with great bandwidth. And so if they're trying to share a bunch of massive files like video editors have to do across a bunch of different teams, wherever they put the Synology is just not gonna have enough upload speed. With this, this brings a great option for hybrid share. And so if they have a hybrid share enabled, what they can do is pretty much just store all that most recent video footage in the hybrid C2 cloud. Then you can set up specific users by clicking this right here. And as you'll see, you can only choose a certain number of users based off of your plan. I've not been able to figure out the pricing for that yet, and I think it's probably still coming. But you can say, okay, my video editing team, I want them to actually pull video from the C2 cloud instead of pulling video from the local NAS. And for this, whatever pricing I've got, just because it's the beta one, I have five users able to do this. So that would mean that I could easily have my five video editors all pulling data, not from my server, but instead from the cloud, which pretty much has unlimited bandwidth. And that would mean that I'm not limited by my upload speed of wherever the NAS is. All it has to do is upload it once to the C2 cloud, and then it's gonna be available everywhere. And so I think this is actually a solution. I'm gonna to have to do some testing, obviously, and figure out the best way to set this up. 
that could be huge for those video production houses who have this exact setup. And so this is gonna be really interesting and I'd love to see how this pricing works later on. Next up, there's also a lot better sharing settings. So sharing is probably the thing that got the biggest overhaul within Synology Drive and they let you have such specific stuff. A lot of these features were already in DSM-6, but they've just done a much better job with it in DSM-7. So you can say who is allowed to share things publicly. And if they do share it publicly, you have to have a password. And you can also say, you know what, they've got to expire. And so you've got a lot of ability to choose exactly what you want to do. And you can just set up a corporate policy for it really well. And let's see this in action. We'll go ahead and just open up Synology Drive. And we can see right here in this test folder, I just threw a single video in here, just pick something. And so you can see the owner and everything. And now we've got this great option for sharing right here. So when you open up sharing, you've got a bunch of stuff here. You can say, okay, I wanna share this internally. And then it'll just end up with this shared in me for whoever it is. You can choose user or groups and even mail the file link, which I'm really excited about, especially for the way I work. And then you can also even have a public link. And so you can say, okay, I want to have a public link. And you can choose for the link to expire as well as requiring a password. And so now let's just do that. We'll go ahead and copy it. And also for other people who are aware, look how much longer the string is compared to how it used to be. So this is going to be a lot more secure because there is no way you're just going to randomly brute force these massive character strings. And so you can just go ahead and copy it and then we'll easily be able to send it. So I'm just gonna add this password on here. We'll hit save. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open that link, but in a private browser. So that way I'm not logged in. We'll go ahead and click on it. Gotta add the password. And so now I can see it. Now I've got the option to download it here. And so it's got very little information other than exactly what I was sent. And so that is really good and it makes sharing stuff a lot more secure. And so now let's go ahead and see what happened in admin console right here. So if we go into overview, now we can see, by the way, I did this test earlier, there have been two downloads. Well, let's see what's going on. So we can actually just click on it and we can see exactly who downloaded it and why. So we can see that I downloaded the file from this IP address. And so it's a 10 IP address, which is local, which means, okay, this was a local one. And you can see who all is downloading stuff and even go, oh, wait, 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 let's actually edit that and we're going to cancel that and be able to go through and have administrators say, why is this being shared? Who is this being shared with? And figure out who actually sent the file. And we can even go through and say, okay, who is this? Oh, this is in Will's drive, it's right here. Let's figure out what happened and why this is being shared. And so you've got a lot of great information here that's gonna make administrating this a lot easier. Previously, you didn't really know what was going on. If somebody shared a link that was getting passed around and a ton of people were downloading it, not only is that gonna be eating up your bandwidth, that could also be something you don't want shared out super easily. And so you can go through and kind of do your own management and see who is pulling stuff and why. I'm actually going to move to this for my own business and being able to share videos with people. So during my Zoom consulting meetings, if you want, I will record them and just send them to you later. And so I'm gonna start using this over the other method I've been using. And so overall, I'm actually really excited about all these updates in here. And I think it's just a much better update. And I think we're now at a point where I prefer this over Google Drive. It is so much cheaper because you're not paying by the terabyte, you're just buying your own terabytes of storage and being able to put them in there. And you have local access to everything, so you're not really bandwidth limited. The only thing that is still a downside is the fact that if your internet at your house goes down or your business, now everybody else cannot access them remotely. But I'm sure C2 will fix that later on. And for certain people, that's a pretty low edge case and it might not matter to you. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this overview. I hope it was helpful. And put any other tutorials or other things in DSM-7 you'd like to see in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.